It's time for another good old fashioned who done it. Apparently, this chair is still spinning. Well, I guess this is how we're watching the movie. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Natalie, and today we're watching Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Thank you so much for being here, especially you. Yes, you. Hello, you. You. Please don't leave. <laughs> Thank you so much to all of my subscribers, my golden gramps who stick around, who watch these movies and shows with me on a regular basis. I really appreciate having y'all here. I hope I haven't scared you away yet. And welcome if you're new. Hey, hi, how are ya? If you enjoy my videos and you keep watching them over and over and over again, but you're not subscribed, maybe consider clicking that little red button down below to become a crispy golden cereal buddy today. Today, we are watching Glass Onion. This movie has been out for a little while now. It came out, I believe, around Thanksgiving time, just like Knives Out did. It had been in theaters for a little while, and over the holidays, they released it to Netflix, and I'm pretty excited to be getting on into this one today. Knives Out was incredible. It was so much fun, so good. And I will say, I haven't heard as much about Glass Onion. I haven't necessarily heard people raving about it or seen it posted all over the internet, so I don't know if this movie is as strong as the first one in the series, but I am still really excited to check it out and see what it has in store. I know the cast is completely different aside from Daniel Craig, who plays Benoit Blanc again, so it seems like he's the main character of both of the Knives Out series. I believe Katherine Hahn is in this movie, and I just adore her. I love her, so I'm really excited to see who else is in this movie because I've kind of not really looked up the cast. I've just seen her face a couple times when trying to find this movie online. And I believe this movie takes place in a warmer climate too, which I'm quite envious of. I feel like I'm gonna have a hard time watching this because it's been really cold and rainy here in Los Angeles. For those of y'all that are up to date on the weather, well, actually by the time this video is coming out, who knows what the weather is like because I'm like really behind on YouTube. I'm much further ahead on Patreon than I am on YouTube. So I don't know when you're seeing this, but at the time of me filming this, we've just been getting hammered with rain here in LA. My house sprung a leak. It's very exciting times. So I'm excited to just kind of take a break from the doom and the gloom and the horrible weather and the leak in my house and just check out for a little bit and pretend like I am in Greece in a warm, lovely, temperate climate. I don't even know what kind of climate you'd classify Greece as, but an island climate, a warm, sunny day. That's what I'm in the mood for. I could really use that right now, and I bet a lot of you watching could use that too. So without any further ado, let's get on into the movie. So grab a drink, grab a snack, and let's get into Glass Onion. Subject. Catherine! Hey. Oh, s sorry. Uh, oh, the mask. Oh, it's COVID times in the movie. So she didn't have a mask on. That's funny. And with me now is Connecticut Governor. Connecticut Clarence. Governor. It's funny that she's the one answering the door getting the packages when she had this interview in two seconds. Exactly. You can't keep making excuses for every one of Miles Braun's insane whims. Miles Braun. So is Miles gonna be the one that gets murdered? He's asking us to put a volatile substance on a manned flight. He won't listen. He just says, make it work. Oh, the same box. He got a delivery too. I'm a hard light on climate change. If that scares you, go stick your head back in the sand. Ooh, I mean, I like that. I would vote for her. That's all I know about her so far, but. Hey, or Oh my God, Kate Hudson. Because she's afraid that I will tweet an ethnic slur. Again. Again? I thought it was a generic term for cheap. Jewy. What the f girl? Everything is so woke these days. It's so, I mean, yes, but like, that's not, you, uh, it's just f up to say, though. And the answer is no, Jimmy Kimmel. I do not hate boobs. Boobs give us many useful things. Boobs give us milk, cheese, breast nourish our young until the age where we can go out and hunt for them. Is he like a YouTuber? I, what is? For centuries, the Western workplace has been dominated by men because that's what nature made us. Ah! Uh, I've been calling you. You gotta answer me when I call. Oh. He lives with his mom. Does he live with his mom? That's hysterical. Jeez, mom, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're sorry. She's doing your laundry, you loser. My mom already broke it. It's a stereogram. Oh, 
she did something to it, it opened up. She got it open, the mother! She's so smart. Genius. That first one's a Fibonacci sequence. Ma! She knows everything! This is his closest inner circle. They're all so different. We could all use a moment of normalcy, and so you are cordially invited to a COVID, a COVID pod party, huh? Because you will also be competing to solve the mystery <laughs> of my murder. Travel details to come. Please forward any dietary restrictions. <laughs> include, include the dietary restrictions. He's dead, though. Are you kidding me? What's that? I don't know. You don't know. You know, ma'am. You know everything. Oh, she has one too? Oh, but she wasn't included on the phone call. I wonder why. She's gonna break it open with a hammer. That's hilarious. That's honestly hysterical. If I knew Miles, that's probably what I would do too if I wasn't friends with these people. Among Us, ah! Oh my God. Wait, hold on. What just happened? Blog man. <laughs> I saw you go in the engine room. You're the imposter. We all know it. It's all famous people playing Among Us together. What the f is this? What a group of people. This is the only way we're gonna get them all in the movie. It's like, you can just do a quick Zoom call. It's easy. There's someone here for you. With a box. Oh, he's included. There we go. Oh, glass onion. I just put it together. Like the thing that they open in the box looked like a glass onion. Got it. It's a little interesting that it's set during COVID times, like, and we're having all these like topical references, like Among Us. It's kind of interesting. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Oh, here's. Oh my God, she's wearing a mask with holes in. Oh, honey. Oh, honey. What an extraordinary gathering. Who's coming? Oh no, he's leaving. Oh. She's shooting a gun. Jesus Christ, these guys are crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Greece. Oh, is that Ethan Hawke? What's he holding? I need you to remove your mask. Oh, is it like a thermo thermometer? Honestly, it'd be better to be uh, Birdie J in that scenario. Go first. What is that? Yeah. Be, please. I'd be like, yeah, what is that? Tell me what it is. You won't be needing that anymore. I won't. You're good. Is that some kind of disinfectant? Oh, you're good. Have a great trip, everyone. That is the most suspicious thing. Not answering the question. You're good. I'm like, yo, I got celiac disease. What is in this? Is there gluten? I need to know. Oh, she's here. Right, right, right. The dramatic reveal. Do they all know her? Is Peggy vaping? Is that a vape? That's so funny. Andy, hi. Holy sh was Andy like Miles's lover? I have questions. There's so much tension between her and the rest of the group. She's not in your little gang. She was. She is. She was. Andy started Alpha with Miles 10 years ago. Oh, they started Alpha. One legal move would cut her out completely. Oh. Mr. Prawn, I cannot overstate my gratitude I'm for so this. Happy I to meet. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's like in pajamas. Andy. What? You invited her. You're here. Uh-huh. I am. He really didn't think she was gonna show up? Why'd you invite her? I know you guys think I'm a hippie, but can we just take a second and fully abbreviate this moment together? A hippie? Multi-billionaire totally screams hippie to me. Just our gang, just us. Hey, hey. Hey, bro. Except him. <laughs> That's Daryl. He's, he's- Daryl! Daryl! I wanna hang out with Daryl. Can I just have some beers with Daryl? Like, f all the rest of this sh where I am now, what I'll leave to the world. Ignore me. It's, I, this ah! Is he gonna keep crossing the frame like that? That's honestly hysterical. Look, I sent everyone home. I just wanna have a normal weekend with my old friends like the old days. Wow, and this robot. I've seen this robot on YouTube. That's also hysterical. Like, I just want it to be normal. Meanwhile, I'm gonna have this fancy ass robot get the bags. Is that a motor car? Oh yeah, that's my baby blue. On the roof? Goes anywhere I go. It goes anywhere I go. Why is it on the roof? Yeah, why is it on the roof? Because there's nowhere to drive it on the island. Okay, so why did you bring it here? He's just walking around barefoot too, it's hilarious. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. What are you doing here? 
Oh. You invited me. No, I didn't. Oh, someone did. Just like in Knives Out when Chris Evans invited him, but he didn't know who did. I I've got the pre-definite detective in the world at my murder mystery party. That is so legit. It really is, yeah. It's a waste of his time, but sure. <sighs> oh, God. Really, Duke? Really? Ay, 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 what a, what a, ay, ay, ay. Oh my God, he is such a piece of work. He's definitely not the murderer though, it'd be too obvious. Oh my God, put the gun away! You never know when shit's gonna go down. Uh, what are they talking about? But Benoit, why are you in with your clothes on? Oh, I believed it. I believed it. Ah, wait, Peggy likes it. But she's like, yeah, she's going, she's going. The real thing this group has in common. Andy, come on. Oh, Lionel. Everybody knows who Lionel works for. That's no secret. Oh, do they all work for me? And we know who bankrolled Claire's campaign. Oh, that's the real thing we all have in common. He's the funder. Nobody would touch Bertie with a 10-foot pole because she went on Oprah and compared herself to Harriet Tubman. What a dumb fucking Girl, you're so dumb. When Duke got banned from Twitch for hawking rhino horn boner pills to teenage boys. With zero rhino on those pills. Who do you think set them up at YouTube and used their- YouTube! Mm-hmm. Oh, now he streams on YouTube? Oh. I feel like I rarely see Twitch and YouTube get referenced in movies. This is kind of crazy. Uh-oh. Who are you spying on? Is it Whiskey? Boldly cheating on you. It's a lot of people with motivation here to kill Miles, huh? Why, why would you- Hang a framed print of the Mona Lisa front and center. Is that the real Mona Lisa? There's no way. Come on. <laughs> Wait, that's impossible, Miles. Yeah, what? Blame it on the Pando, Blanc. Blame it on the Pando? Blame it on the Paniti. It suddenly takes on layers and depth so complex, it gives you vertigo. It really is something. It's a classic. Daryl! Hey, not here. <laughs> and right here, I'm gonna unveil the future. What's that? I don't. <laughs> don't yeah. Oh my God. That's a what is solid hydrogen fuel. Oh, the chemical they were talking about on a moving on a plane, like a manned plane. No. You're running this entire place off this? All of it. The heating and the cooling, everything, right down to my fax machine. That's how he's been texting it? Or testing it? Not texting, sorry. That's how he's been testing it? This is reckless. And you're gonna get somebody killed. Oh. He's a disruptor, though. This guy's crazy. Because tonight, in this very room, a murder will be committed. Obviously, he means it as a joke, but I feel like he's really gonna die. As Watson said to Holmes. It was Bertie who planted a remote device on a crossbow in revenge for you stealing her signature Ren Diamond. Was that it? Was that it? He already figured it out. And that's a family heirloom, I believe. Oh, to be clear, I mean, I didn't know what a blood diamond was. Okay, honey, no one's trying to cancel you right now. Calm down. Unfortunately, this crime clashed with the presence of Ben Wall. Yeah, he was too good. He figured it out so fast. He sold it before it even happened. That's funny. My God, that just felt so good. He ruined it. He's so mad. He's so mad. He worked so hard on it. Truth is, I, I, I ruined your game on purpose and... <gasps> oh, that's gonna make him angry. I'm sorry, what? Listen, there's actually more interesting going on than your stupid game, dude. You've taken seven people, each of whom has a real life reason to wish you harm, gathered them together on a remote island, and placed the idea of your murder in their heads. Yeah. It's like putting a loaded gun on the table and turning off the lights. Oh, oh. <laughs> Come on. Are you just that oblivious? Ah, <sighs> Andy. Yes, Andy. Oh, he's in shadow now, interesting. Andy used to tell me the truth. Nobody does that now. Yeah, well, you cut her out. She was the one person that, like, you could trust. Hating you when you don't give it to him because that's what you're there for. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's a sad life, but you cut her out! What are you 
you want. Poor tortured billionaire. It is, because you cut her out. She was honest with you. I'd feel bad for you if she betrayed you, but you betrayed her, so I don't feel bad. You made money off of Alpha all those years. You did fine. You got yours. I got it. No, he got his from me. It's not just about money either. It's also like the person you trusted as your partner betrayed you. All over the internet. You look at those numbers. It's fire. It changes things, right? It changes things? Numbers like this. Maybe we can talk alpha news. Man. It's so funny. His whole brand is alpha, but he's so emasculated by this guy that he sucks up to for money because like he's cheating with his girlfriend and he just lets it happen. He lets the affair happen because he just needs his help. He needs his money. So ironic. Everybody, Milo says, look at me. Look at you. What is going on with the Mona Lisa? It's got a the dinging and the Mona Lisa shield. It's gotta mean something. I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> Duke. Duke! Oh, Duke's dying? Oh my God, I did not expect him to die. Uh, I'm afraid Mr. Cody is, is dead. Okay, well, I guess I'm suspicious of Andy because she bumped into him and like maybe there was something on her, but who else? Miles also hugged him. I'm sure somebody else touched him too. I mean, the drink, I mean, there's a lot of options. That nobody touch the body or disturb anything around it. Police? Yeah. Are, are you treating this as a crime scene? It is, he just died. They all care about their image. Oh, is he realizing someone was trying to kill him because it was Miles' glass? Someone was trying to kill Miles, but Duke got it. Poor Duke, rough day. Forget about his phone, look. The gun. This is crazy. My murder game. We were gonna be having drinks and I thought it'd be fun to say something dramatic just at 10 o'clock and then we were gonna have 20 minutes where, Blanc, you have to help me. You have to help me, help me. Where the lights go out. What happens at 10 o'clock? The lights go out. <laughs> He's panicking. Ah, that's funny. Oh my God, they're all losing it. None of these people are mentally stable enough for a situation like this. Oh my God. Everyone's running around making creepy shadows. Oh, all the knives, are you kidding me? Oh Lord, help us. Oh Lord, yeah, oh Lord, help us. Why is she running around? <gasps> Who is that? Is it Daryl? Oh, they wanna kill Andy though. Or do they wanna kill Benoit? Do they wanna kill Andy or Benoit? We only need one last piece of information, but only you can. Oh, did they, is she dead? No way. No way. Only you can give me the one last piece of information. And she's dead. She's dead now. Oh, dang. Oh, he's crying. Oh, man. You wanted an adventure, Mr. Blanc. You wanted a challenge. Well, get there, will you? Yeah. Is this Philip, his, his assistant? A partner, a butler? I don't know. Yes. Is, is this Benoit Blanc's residence? And he delivered it? Wow. My name is Helen Brand, and I came all the way here from Alabama. She lied about her identity? Mr. Blanc, two days ago, I received a call. My twin sister committed suicide. Oh, this is wild. This is crazy. Oh my God. Oh, she wasn't putting on an act. Her and her sister have different accents. Holy Man, being a twin really spices things up. And I'm sure there's some clever way to open it. I don't know, I just opened it. Oh yeah, oh, that's why she just, <laughs> it's not cause she was angry, it's cause she's like, I don't know, I'm just gonna bang it open. That's funny. They like to call themselves the disruptor. Yeah, yeah, it's annoying. Man, and she did that little monologue and they all bought it hook, line and sinker. They thought it was Andy, that's crazy. Andy didn't commit suicide. She was murdered. She was murdered. The murder went farther back than we anticipated. I finally found it. It's right here, and I'm gonna use it to burn his whole empire down. Oh, she sent it to all of them. I've not seen your sister's death in the news. Did, mm -hmm. did you release a statement? No. Was I supposed to? Oh, is that why they were all extra shocked to see Andy? Oh my God, this is getting crazy. I'm proposing that you- Oh, and he proposed that. 
And she died. Right. They don't know Andy is dead. So why would they suspect anything? Yeah, unless they knew that she was dead. Do you really think we can get the son of <sighs> It's definitely not Duke. And it's weird, like I don't think it's Miles because Miles wasn't included on that email. Although Miles did seem really taken aback when Andy showed up on the island. Like really, like he'd seen a ghost. So it could have been Andy, I suppose. Or Miles. It could have been Miles, I suppose, because he seemed shocked, but uh, I don't know. What about Miles? What if he just did it? Right, what if it was Miles? To risk committing murder after a very public call case. Mm hmm It's pretty dumb, true. Bertie J's kind of dumb. But I don't know what her motive would be. And Miles was leader of the pack. No, Andy was. They and were. he was, of course, of course. He got Birdie a show for designs, it did well. Got Lionel published. And they're all, they're all gonna forget that Andy was the one. And it was her that did the napkin, yeah. She was the real star, the real overachiever. Her whole case was based on intellectual ownership of the company's founding idea. Yeah. Her idea on the napkin. Yeah. Which she didn't keep. Oh, and they all testified for him. Of course they did. That's the real napkin. Oh, that's what she found, the real napkin, I see. I'm scared. I understand. This is your last chance to back out. She didn't back out, but she did die. I mean, unless it was like a fake death, but I, Feel like it probably wasn't. I feel like she is dead, unfortunately. When we're all settling in, Brown's gonna pull me aside to explain my presence. That is your chance to snoop. Mm. Oh, we're seeing her perspective of things now. That's great. Oh, that's why she was running around and everyone was like, she's not herself. She doesn't look like the way she normally looks because she's like running around like in a more casual kind of form, the way she was running. This case confounds me, just confounds me. She, Serena's watching. Do so, either of you two what? want to do a session or what? I'm on the clock. No, no, no not right now. I do. All right, it's your money, not mine. Oh my God, I totally do. Are you f kidding me? But I want to play tennis with you. That's what I want to do. You know, they won't have an envelope that size on that person. They'll have to hide it in that room. Is that why she left? A way that is so painfully uncomfortable that nobody will question it or follow you. Oh. You're the loser. That's the truth. It's so funny because after this, he was like, ah, oh, same old Andy, when it's like literally not Andy. Like you don't, you don't even know her. There she is, there's Andy, I know. Uh-huh. Damn it. What the Does she have a flip phone? Uh-oh. Did the news just break of her sister's death? The news just broke! The Google alerts! Oh, I've been a fool. There's one more room to search. The, oh, the glass onion. And only you can. So sad, no! <gasps> Wait, it was an act? It was an act. The book? No f way, the book stopped it? Oh, it was an act, yay! I am so happy. What does he have in his pocket to make it look like blood? The hot sauce! Jeremy Renner! Oh, I hope he's doing better from his snowmobile incident. At the last moment, I realized what it teased my brain through this entire case. Inbreathing. Oh, that's what Miles said when they first showed up. He used, yeah, he used that made up word. To inbreathing this moment. Now, reclamation, now, nah, well, that is a word, but it's the wrong word. This place, it's the full reclamation of everything I've achieved up to now. It is the wrong word. I didn't even notice that one. Bask in the sun, swim in the Ionian Sea. That is the Aegean Sea. He's a moron. He didn't design the puzzle boxes. Right. He didn't write the mystery. He hired people to do all that Look into the clear center of this glass onion. Miles Braun is an idiot. Is that a photo of him? I just noticed that. A painting of him? He is an idiot. You handed Duke your own glass. Now why would you kill Duke? Because it's easier than dealing with the repercussions of the situation with whiskey and having to put him on Alpha News. 
when Duke got to Andy's house early on his motorcycle, he saw Miles leaving. Oh, that's why he almost got pancaked. <laughs> Holy! She's not dead, guys. <laughs> what is reality? <laughs> The commitment. I love you, Kate Hudson. That was great. Who did the envelope threaten? It threatened Miles. And he seemed the most disturbed when he saw Andy show up on his island. Birdie, what are the ingredients to your Cuban breeze? Um, vodka, amaretto. Amaretto is made from almonds. Is he allergic to almonds? Is Duke allergic? Pineapple. Oh, right. Pineapple juice. He said that. He just put pineapple juice in his whiskey. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. So dumb, it's brilliant. No! It's not brilliant! Ben was angry that it's not more complicated. And now we come to Helen's attempted murder. Mm-hmm. You murdered one person and attempted to murder another. It's like putting a loaded gun on the table and turning off the lights. Oh, and they, he gave him the idea. Yeah, he really isn't. He is smart. He's pretty dumb. And after all that, you you still kept the envelope. Right, because he's dumb. He could have burned it. He's so dumb. The bar closed nine years ago, and hers has one thing. Just don't stand too close to him with the napkin. I'm nervous. Ah. But second. Yeah, I mean, guys. Guys, no, like. He just burned it. Yeah, I don't know why you stood so close to him. The contents of that envelope his possession of it were our only physical evidence. I can't imagine they'd be that dumb. There must have been like, there's gotta be something. You do shoot the bullet at least. In, her, in the book, you'd be like, look, he shot me. And a reminder of why your sister walked away in the first place. What does he mean? What's going on? What did he place? What did he place in the hands? Oh, is it the hydrogen? Is it the hydrogen? Is she gonna throw the hydrogen? Is she gonna sacrifice herself and kill all these awful people and that's why Benoit Blanc is running away? She's not opening that right hand. I bet it's the hydrogen. Are they all joining? So join in? Yeah. You guys will join in in this, but you won't tell the truth. <laughs> I get it, guys. Let it all out. You're so, what a prick, like he doesn't care that all these people hate him. What is it, what do you want? The lighter. Hell yeah. Yeah. You think the sprinkler system would go off in a house like this. Oh, but there's hydrogen, the whole house is powered on hydrogen. That's pretty intense. Oh, there come the sprinkler system. I looked up for a second, it got me, I don't know why. There y'all go. Hindenburg. Wow. This is a smokeless garden. Daryl! Daryl got out too, great. Oh man, some of them might be okay. Miles is fine, let's f up. Please tell me he's about to die. The car, yes, great. The Mona Lisa! Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa. Yeah, Helen! Why are you trying to stop her, Lionel? Let it be. Oh, they're all trying to stop her. No, she don't give a Yes! The override button. And it's so funny because it's a joker. Just like Miles is a joker. Like he's a clown. Damn, you know? That's kind of sad. I mean, I love it in the sake of the movie, but that's kind of f***ed up, Helen. That's where I draw the line, like, although it would ruin Miles' life, which is pretty epic. And you did get your wish to forever be remembered in the same breath. As the Mona Lisa, he did get his wish, yeah. You guys are all smiling, but you made your bed to lie with him. Gang, we all saw the same thing. Oh, come on, finally, they're gonna walk away now. I saw the napkin he burned. Yeah. I saw him driving away from Andy's house the night she was killed. Yeah, because that's what Duke saw. F yeah. 
We're lying for the truth now. Hell yeah. You it. Mm-hmm. That's all you have is name calling. Pathetic. I told you oh! I forgot that there was a song called Glass Onion by the Beatles. I completely forgot about that. Wow, that's funny. This was a fun movie. I definitely enjoyed it. I will say I do think Knives Out was definitely better. I think there's just something about the way Knives Out starts and how we immediately get dropped in with there's been this murder and it's this captivating murder mystery story right from the beginning, whereas this was more like a slow burn. We're starting off, it's just a game. And then halfway into the movie, oh, shit, the stakes are actually high and there has been a murder. Everything is not as it seems. Actually, this character um, that Janelle Monet was playing is actually pretending to be her sister. And it's this whole web of lies and mystery. I think it was definitely more of a slow burn in the beginning and it just kind of felt slow and I it took me a little while to get into it. But then once the ball got rolling, I did really enjoy it a lot. I think also in the beginning, it starts off, you know, with these characters who are just all so unlikable and so out of touch with reality. I mean, they're having a party in the middle of a pandemic on a private island in Greece with this billionaire. They're all completely and totally fake. They suck up to this billionaire, Miles, regardless of whether or not they like him or whether or not they agree with him. He even says, oh, it's so low. Only everybody just tells me yes all the time. But then the second anyone tells him no, he throws a tantrum and blackmails them into doing what he wants them to do. It's just all these people are really unlikable and detestable. And they're getting together in the middle of a pandemic. I mean, that's just really frustrating as, you know, all of us, the audience who are watching, who couldn't escape to a private island in Greece during the pandemic, we were all quarantining and like literally not traveling at all, not leaving our house, not seeing friends, not seeing family. So it definitely made you hate a lot of these characters and also just a lot of their opinions and the ways they operated in the world were just really unlikable as well. But then it's fun in the end because you really see all of them kind of have this downfall moment where the whole house of cards literally comes tumbling down around them. The whole house literally tumbles down, burns down around them. And they can either keep up the lie and support Miles, but Miles in the end really is not worth supporting. He can't help them anymore uh, because now he's going to have a downfall and be synonymous with the destruction of the Mona Lisa. So hated by the world. And now they're all finally ready to turn on him, which is frustrating that they couldn't do it for the right reasons, but they're all very self-serving characters. So it's kind of satisfying in the end to see that this guy that they've aligned themselves with and stood up for and um, are now stuck on this island with, and their names are going to be in the paper, at least they're taking him down with them. You know, they're all facing their own demise. And that was really satisfying to watch Janelle Monae's character get revenge for her sister in that way. I really thought when she dropped the hydrogen, like the little piece of clear that they might all die in the house fire. But I was actually surprised that they all survived. That's great. I mean, I think it's more satisfactory that way, to be honest, to see that he's going to have to live through being canceled, being, you know, financially ruined and now being synonymous with the destruction of Mona Lisa, that he doesn't just get off that easy and die in an accident. Instead, he's got to like face the world. And that's so much worse, in my opinion. So yeah, it did have a very satisfying ending. I think Janelle Monae did a fantastic job, like great job. Really loved her in this movie. I was really pleasantly surprised to see Leslie Odom Jr. because I feel like I've mostly just seen him in plays or musicals. Um, and it's exciting to see him in a movie. I know he's done stuff film and television wise before, but I was excited to see him in a big movie like this. I feel like Edward Norton is just the perfect guy to cast for this kind of role for like this obnoxious, self-satisfied billionaire who thinks he's really smart, but in reality just knows how to manipulate people and knows how to get what he wants from others and is actually in reality pretty dumb. Um, <laughs> I feel like I'm not saying that that's how Edward Norton is. I just feel like he did a really good job as that role. It was just kind of funny. I feel like the last thing I saw him in was Fight Club because Tyler and I watched that 
at the beginning of the pandemic. And so this is the first time I've seen him in anything in a while. Oh, I guess we we did watch The Incredible Hulk here on my channel, but I feel like this was just a really funny role for him and it, it made a lot of sense. I enjoyed him in this type of role. Same thing with, you know, Katherine Hahn and Kate Hudson. I feel like I feel like the cast was just really strong and uh, I love Katherine Hahn. I adore her. I will watch her in anything she does and I just feel like everyone did a great job in this movie. But yeah, I just feel like the first Knives Out is a lot more satisfying, especially like the twist at the end. I feel like with this, it kind of made sense that Miles would be the one that killed Andy. And so I wasn't even like that surprised when it was revealed. In Knives Out, I was doubting who could have reached out to Benoit Blanc, who could it be? And when it was Chris Evans in the end, like I saw that as an option, but there were so many other characters because the family was so much bigger that it was really so confusing. And all the little twists and turns at the end really did throw me off in that movie. With this, I felt like I was really led towards it being Miles and I wasn't really that surprised when it was revealed. So I think Knives Out is just a better, more flushed out murder mystery. It's also like the classic setting, you know, this mansion in this like supposedly East Coast estate. I kind of forget where we were in that movie, but it felt like an East Coast estate. It was set in the fall. It was very cold and gloomy out. This is like, you know, a murder mystery on an island in Greece, which is fun. And it definitely lends to that feeling of why we're hating these characters even more, because not only are they egotistical, completely self-serving and, you know, out of touch with reality and with morality completely. I mean, they're just not good people. They're not doing the right thing, but they're also partying on an island in Greece. Like go f yourselves, go, just go f yourselves. It's a panini. I, I think the setting did lend towards that feeling, which was good, but I just think Knives Out was more fun personally. Knives Out, I could see myself rewatching even though I know how it ends and I know the twist at the end. This, the twists came a little bit in the middle of the movie, I'd say, as opposed to more at the end. Like at the end, I was like, yeah, I get it. He murdered her, whatever. But in the middle, the twist was that like Janelle Monet was actually playing Helen, not Andy. And Andy was actually dead. And that was a big reveal. So that really kind of woke me up in the middle of the movie and got me invested again and got me excited. But I feel like with Knives Out, it was just like this captivating ride the whole time and I was in it. This just felt a little bit slower. It was also funny to see references like Among Us and playing games with your friends over like Zoom, which that was another thing that was funny. Like they were playing Among Us, but they were also on a Zoom call, which is how like the Jimmy Fallon show did it. But that's like not how anyone plays Among Us. <laughs> Like they just play Among Us. They don't get on a Zoom call while they're playing Among Us. So that was just so funny because that was such a boomer way of playing Among Us. But it like it fit in with how Jimmy Fallon did it. Um, but that was also just such a dated reference. But it was really a sign of the times. Like it showed, oh, this is where we're at in the pandemic, in the quarantine. Uh, so that was kind of funny. I feel like this is the first movie I've ever seen that was really referencing the fact that we were in a pandemic and that it was the COVID quarantine. Like, I feel like this was the first movie that I've really seen like that. I feel like other movies have joked about it or touched on it, but this one was like really set in that time and it was really prevalent. So that was interesting. The music was still great. The sets were phenomenal. Like you can tell they definitely had more money for this movie just based on the sets alone, but also the cast was significantly smaller. I feel like for the first Knives Out, a lot of the money was probably spent on just all the name talent they had. I mean, I don't know, maybe, I mean, maybe the cast sizes were relatively similar because now that I'm thinking about it, we had that really like stacked Zoom call early on in the movie with characters, um, well, actors, just like Natasha Leone was in it. Yeah, Natasha Leone. Stephen Sondheim was in that call, which I love Stephen Sondheim. I did not know that was him. I think when it comes to like musical composers and writers, I don't know what they look like, but I've sung a ton of Stephen's songs. I was in Company back in the day, fun fact, and Into the Woods. I love Stephen Sondheim, but could not have told you that that was him if my life depended on it. And then like Angela Lansbury and Kareem as well. I mean, it was just an, a needlessly stacked Zoom call. And it, I don't know, it kind of made me roll my eyes a little bit. Like I understood what they were trying to go for there, but it just felt a little silly to me. To be honest, it didn't really feel necessary. I feel like you could have cut that whole scene and it wouldn't have really, 
detracted from the movie very much. So um, that just kind of seemed like a moment where they wanted to get named talent for this Zoom call. Like you could have had anyone in that Zoom call to show like, oh, we're playing Among Us and it's a Zoom call. Like here's a sign of the times. If you want to make that reference, go right ahead. But like you couldn't have given it to actors and like people who've you know, don't have a resume, like maybe give them a chance to like shine for one scene with Daniel Craig. Like, I don't know. As a former casting person, I kind of roll my eyes at things like that because we really didn't need that Zoom call to be for famous people. It was just like for the novelty of like, oh my God, look who it is in this call together. So crazy. But I don't know. You could have given that opportunity to like actors that are less known and it really wouldn't have changed the scene at all. So and when I see stuff like that, it just kind of bums me out. Like we already have a really stacked cast in this movie. People are already going to go see it because it's a part of, you know, intellectual property of Knives Out. It's a part of this series. You got people like Daniel Craig and Katherine Hahn and Janelle Monet. Like you have these really cool people in this movie. You don't need to stack every single scene with like massively famous actors. But that's just the former casting person inside of me who wants to give new actors opportunities. Although it's funny because I did like kind of enjoy Ethan Hawke as the weird <laughs> assistant on the dock. Like I think I just love Ethan Hawke. So that was just like a pleasant little surprise and then we never saw him again. Like that really could have been anyone as well. But also Ethan Hawke has such a weirdly comforting and sinister presence. <laughs> I think ever since I saw him in Moon Knight, I'm just like, he is that guy. Like he's just, he's comforting, but also terrifying. Like he's great. And so that character, he did do a good job with that character, just like not answering anyone's questions and shooting them in the face with some medical product. But that also could have really been anybody, but I also did kind of enjoy it. So I forgive it in some moments. I just think that Zoom call was a little silly. Anyway, those are my ramblings on the movie. I did have a lot of fun with it. I think the ending was fun and very satisfying from the perspective of an audience member who was like hating most of the characters. And it's fun to see, you know, Janelle Monet did such a great job and really root for her and Daniel Craig. I really had a good time and I hope you guys did too. If you liked watching this movie with me, definitely make sure to give this video a thumbs up so that I know and I can check out more stuff like this. Maybe the next Knives Out movie if that does end up happening in the future. Of course, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and anything else you might like me to check out next and subscribe if you want to. Till the next one, stay golden. Bye.